And we're back with Dogecoin. This one comes from Jay Hothead. So thank you for your recommendation. I'll do an honest review on this cryptocurrency. It's not just pumping it to the moon, but if you want me to review your cryptocurrency, anyone who's watching, leave a comment down below and I'll put add it to my Google Sheets and I'll review it honestly and fairly and give an unbiased opinion. Just be aware that it's not financial advice. It's just my honest take. I can always be wrong, but I love charts and love digging into them. So I'm happy just to do it for educational purposes only. And I can get better at improving my own charting skills as well. So let's have a look at Doge against its USD value. And then we'll compare it to ETH and we'll compare it to Bitcoin. And I'll do some price predictions as well and give my honest thoughts about it. So let's have a look at Doge against its USD value. Obviously, you can see a heavy, heavy, heavy downtrend. And this is the coin that was making everyone's millions of dollars, right? This is the one that this was the first meme coin. This was really being all over the news, Doge, Doge, Doge. And everyone was bandwagoning on it. And I mean, this is sort of the risk that you have when you start buying at incredibly high you know, prices at 73 cents. Everyone was calling Doge to a dollar. Remember that? Doge to the dollar, Elon Musk is tweeting. In every single finance book I read, they always say the same thing. And these finance books are like 100 plus year old books. And they say, when the news starts talking about it and everyone starts talking about it, that is the time to start being fearful. We obviously know that Warren Buffett quote, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. However, in Dogecoin, it is illustrated perfectly because I remember this very, very well when the news and Elon Musk and everything was happening, Doge was going crazy. If you bought there, you'd never really got your money back and it would have kept plummeting it plummeting it against you. And you. this is why stop loss is very important because you can at least get out of there and you would have been really, really happy just to lose 20%, 30% rather than getting dumped on maybe near the high to the low at around 82-ish percent. So this is a bag you'll probably be holding for a long time. Let's have a look and see where we are at the moment. So I've drawn a few retracements here and I'll walk you through them and then we'll go through them. So this area here, that would be this red solid area is the major 50%, not the major major, but a pretty fairly major area that it needs to go through 22 cents. Obviously we're still a ways away from it, but let's zoom in a little bit more and have a look so we can see. So here is another mark here, the 25 mark. So that would be here. This is a medium term one at 13 cents. We broke it and we're finding support on it now. Then we have the 50% short term, which is ultra short term, and we found support on it, but it was a false break and we dipped below it. Then we've got the other 50% mark, which I would love to, this, to for it to come to show its strength. The yellow lines are the golden lines, I call them, right? The Michael Bazzino 50% GAN tool, as I always call them. You want your cryptos to stay on this level and continue pushing on to the next level. So say you bought Doge at this 50% level. You'd want it to go to this level and find support here and continuously making to the next 50% areas as it continuously breaks through them because it's just a very, very good tool that's worked. And you can see here as well, found support on it, found support on it, couldn't find support on it, couldn't find a support and dumped on it. And now it's going to find resistance again there. The other thing to pay attention to is its volume. Volume is really, really important. I'll cover it in every single one of my videos because volume is whales, right? It's not retail. It's whales. Whales are buying this thing. So if we have a look, we had a very, very good spike in volume on the 24th of March. And look at that. We had 2.16 billion units of Doge traded in the single day compared to the average of 606 million. But that only increased the price by 5%, which is not really what you want it. You want it to be moving a little bit more. Then we move into the next day. And that's obviously a take profit day. You always want to be careful with cryptos. Why is my crypto pumping? Why is my crypto pumping? It's because of mainly two reasons. One, there's traders out there obviously buying and selling. And the second reason is that there's people with leverage and they got to get rid of the coin straight away and continuously move. Remember, the traders have a completely different mindset to the long term hodlers who just want to hold their coins for five years. They want to grab their profits, in, enter and exit at the market. They don't care about fundamentals. They don't care about it. They're just in and out with their money. They got groceries to pay. They got rent to pay. They're just getting in and out of the market very quickly and very aggressively. That's why you get these pullbacks even on high volume. But we have to respect it. We still have a bit of an inside bar and then we get the next one, which is a bit of an inside bar too. And then we get the confirmation of the up bar on a good volume as well. So there's your almost your breakout at 27 on the 27th of March. But again, the price isn't moving much. Only a 6% increase and then you get your up thrust, you get rejected at the trend and then we're back down again with a heavy day of high volume, but not much movement. So you're seeing Doge have high volume, but it's not really moving in the price. And that's just because it tells me that this is just a tradable coin. A lot of people are trading these coins, these, these Doge coins, and they're, they're not really make, you know, they're not really in it for a big move up. The only time Doge will really pump in my opinion and start challenging its all time high is when it, we, the retail is officially in. When retail's in, Doge will start moving again. But obviously we haven't had Doge really compete to what it was doing early 2021 for a while. And that's because things aren't really crazy yet. But if things get really crazy where Bitcoin's going 100K plus, 
that's when Doge is going to start really going into it. So this is a tradable coin. This is short-term trading. I don't think anyone, including myself, I would never touch this unless I was trading intraday. So if I was trading say, hourly or four hourly, then I might start looking at something like Doge because with the volume, like I mentioned, and the spread of the day being very narrow, it's only 5%, 6%. It tells me that people are just trading this coin left and right. Let's have a look at some price predictions. So I've got the 50 mark at 16 cents, the one mark at 17 cents, 75 at 18.7 cents, one mark at 21 cents. That's where I'd want to see it go. I don't think it's going to get there anytime soon, but of course I can be wrong. Someone can just dump a ton of money on Doge tomorrow and just pump it up. Of course, we've got the 50% retracement here as well at 22 cents. And then we'll have to start really battling all of this churn area and then start pushing back for the high here at 35 cents. Uh, of course, after we go through that, we've got more resistance areas to go through because it's so far away from its all-time high here. And then we can probably start going for the whole time high at around 71 cents, give or take. So a lot of resistance areas for doge to go through i have no hype at all i have no hope at all that this coin's going to be able to do it we'll see of course but a good tradable coin nonetheless so now let's compare doge to ethereum and bitcoin to see the relative strength it has so here we are at coin codex again i compare all of my coins to ethereum value i'm looking for them to outperform ethereum if it's not outperforming ethereum i don't care about holding it i want to see as much green as possible here so avax you can see outperforming ethereum pretty good luna of course has been doing very well with it you can see how many coins underperformed to Ethereum. Let's have a look at Doge. You've probably already seen it. Underperforming to Ethereum across the board. 24 hours done at 3%. Seven days, 3.5%. One month, 8% almost. Three months, almost 10%. Six months, 37%. Year to date, down 10% compared to Ethereum. One year, it's outperformed Ethereum by 33%. So again, I say this with a lot of my videos, but it's very, very true. You can just buy Ethereum, you can reduce your risk and get more returns. And I have no shadow without a doubt in my mind that Ethereum will be worth a lot more than it is now in five years. But in my honest heart of hearts and my honest opinion, I don't think you can say that with most cryptos because there's a lot of cryptos that pumped in 2017 and 2021, early 2021, and they only spike for just a few days and they pump right back down because they're the last bit of retail entering in on almost anything they can grab their hands on and they get dumped on and they get left with those bags for months, potentially years. And crypto will be a very, very different place in five years. There'll be more smarter players. There'll be more people in, there'll be new cryptos. And it's gonna get harder to make your profits as we're already seeing. So be careful with what you say I'm happy to hold on for five years for. I just wanna leave that out there, but that's just my opinion. Let's have a look at Doge against Ethereum. So this is just gone Going back from November, we have a look against Ethereum value. You can pretty much hopefully quickly easily see that, that that is just a downtrend. So I've got my FIB retracement tools. You can see perfect rejection of the 25 mark, perfect rejection of the 50 mark and clean cut right through the 75, pretty much clean cut at the 50 as well. And this is why I say it's good to pull up a chart against Ethereum because I mean, hopefully you can see right off the bat, it's a downtrend. It's a downtrend. You can see I've had to draw my downtrend. I've drawn my wedge. We'll probably try and get out there, but we are heavily still going down. And even yesterday, we've had a bit of a selling day. Uh, Doge is looking like it's not getting picked up by anyone at the moment. And volume is, you know, it's sort of there. But like I said, this is just trading for this much volume and the price being not much difference between the daily, the open and the close tells me that this is just a tradable coin. Let's have a look at Doge against Bitcoin. And again, let's just zoom right out to have a good picture. This one's got a bit more data on it. And you can see you could have just held Bitcoin and you would have absolutely destroyed Doge. So always think about changing your cryptos. Think about how you want to look at your cryptos. Don't just compare your crypto to a USD value thinking I got up 10%. Compare them with other cryptos. And a really good baseline is Bitcoin or Ethereum. And you can see it because if you can't outperform Bitcoin or Ethereum, just buy them. You'll be fine. It's not financial advice, but that's just mathematically how it works in my head. So have a look at it. See what you can do. Downtrend obviously has to push through a lot of resistance barriers. I've drawn my quarterly retracements here for it to try and push through. But like I said, I don't see it happening anytime soon because that is just a huge downtrend. That's going to take Doge months to probably even years before we can start actually getting through these barriers in a nice clean cut way against Bitcoin. So uh, think about your crypto. Some advice. If you own Doge, what should you do if you're down 70, 80%? In my honest opinion, not financial advice, but this is just general information. If you owned Doge and you're 70, 80% down, I would just say, hold on to it. Pray, keep your fingers crossed and wait for Bitcoin to pump. And hopefully you can set some stop losses and reduce your losses a little bit. But that's the way I would think. I would think, okay, how can I reduce my losses? Because it's going to be a loss regardless. That's the way I approach it when you're down 70, 80% in a crypto. I don't think how I'm going to make money. I'm just like, how can I reduce my losses? Because I got at too high of an entry price. So that's okay. That's the cost of education. You'll get better next time. Second, what about if I'm only down 30, 40%? This is probably when I start thinking about cutting your losses because you can actually recover that quite easily in crypto and start thinking about ways you can use your capital rather than just being left with these baggages for months, maybe even years before your crypto does anything, watching every other crypto do something. And that's always hard to think about psychologically. That's just, again, general information only. If it helped, give me a like, give me a subscribe. Give me a recommendation down below that you want me to cover. So comment down below. Until then, everyone, stay safe and I'll catch you on the next video.